Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, good to be here. Uh, my name is Faye Fernandez. In that very long-winded introduction, which is written for formal purposes, when it's posted on to different conference sites. In a nutshell, uh, I'm, the direct, I'm the country director for Torrance University, basically in India, which basically is nothing but me outreaching to students, to institutes, uh, sharing information, and of course, looking for students who are potentially interested in studying with us. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the design programs that we have uh, with two very distinct brands and very different histories, but obviously offering career paths which uh, will resonate with a lot of you guys. Um, I'm just going to quickly start with, here, uh, with the presentation here. So Torrance University is actually just about 10, uh, 10 years old this year. It's the fastest growing university in Australia. And in a nutshell, two of the things we focus on are small batches to co focus better on students, but also industry connections. Basically putting you all on uh, platforms with leading industry uh, companies where you can leverage your networking opportunities and better opportunities for yourself through your program and also when you graduate. Uh, we have multiple locations, so these are not branches, these are full-fledged campuses essentially. Uh, we are located in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide and Brisbane. And this is what our international student mix looks like. Uh, this is just a brief introduction. I'm going to play this video and unfortunately I think I'm not connected to audio. Uh, but this is um, a little bit of an introduction to Australia. Okay, so that was just a bit of an introduction. I think a lot of those images you all would have found very familiar with Australia. Beaches, easygoing uh, attitude, diverse people. Um, just a quick idea of why Australia is popular with students and uh, you know why students actually come there. So again, it's one of the top five destinations for foreign education and primarily because the academic structure is very well set up, right accreditations, good industry connections, Aside from that, two key aspects are, of course, you can um, uh, do your part-time work while you study, but it also gives you a stay-back option after you finish your program. Uh, aside from that, um, we are located in some of the best cities, and uh, we have Australia is known to be a student destination, which means automatically you're getting an international student mix while you're on campus and in whichever destination you choose. Coming now to the crux of why you've been put into this room with me, I wanted to talk a little bit about, if I'm talking about Australia, why, is it, why, does it, why should that resonate with you? Um, the design field in Australia has actually been growing fantastically well. And as we move forward in the past decade, design more and more has overlapped and integrated with technology. I'm sure you all are already learning that through your own uh, courses, your classes, the way you all com complete your assignments. Um, you all also have a mixed cohort of several different disciplines which are, and I'm sure you all are interacting with them like you are today. But um, uh, for, design and, uh, for design and creative technology programs that we have, uh, you can see a bunch of um, brands located here, uh, brands listed over here like Vogue, IBM, PlayStation. These are just a handful of the kind of companies that work with us and um, you know the brand itself that we have, the programs that we have are run under a, a, a specialization college called Billy Blue College of Design, which is um, over, 30, over 30 years, our, our students have won multiple awards for the kind of projects that they've done. And the employability is very high for this field in this country. So a lot of stats, a lot of numbers, but essentially just reiterating what I was saying about what are the actual opportunities that you would have? How realistic is it if somebody goes to study a subject like this and actually getting opportunities there itself rather than just coming back immediately? 
so um, design and design and technology are growing exp are growing really fast the global estimated value for example of the fashion industry is almost uh, 3 trillion us dollars uh, between 2021 and 2026 the number of jobs which is we are currently in this phase is uh, increasing more and more right so what are the actual career paths that you could look forward to realistically speaking depending on what discipline you are already in what you will choose to do after you graduate wherever you get placed even if it's in india itself what are the most likely career paths that you would end up pursuing there are quite a few listed over here some of these you all will already resonate with and already be on the path that you want to follow and you're aiming for that but if you're looking at graphic and communication design you know uh, things like you what have, you already know what a graphic designer is what a web designer is illustrators uh, illustrator sometimes maybe it's a generational shift illustrator for me feels like a bit of an old school term given the fact that you know technology has in uh, has you know progress by leaps and bounds if you are interested in interior design and decoration uh, you can become an interior stylist you can become a 3d computer modeler more and more as we're shifting to technology that's one of the reasons what i mentioned before is that even our design programs are very heavily focused on technology because the fact is that as you move forward more and more things are moving online uh, covid actually made us gave us the push to um, you know, leap into digitization much faster probably than India was on its path to. But that, and that has had some fantastic pros, which is, uh, you know, pre-COVID, I'll give you an example. Um, having a Zoom meeting was almost disrespectful. It's like telling somebody you don't have, you can't make the time to meet them in person. And now that is the norm because it saves money. It saves, uh, it saves money in terms of travel. It saves time. Time is money, right? Time is precious and you can't get that back. And what money, uh, what time you would be spending on the road just to reach somewhere, you can now, right up till the start of your presentation or your meeting, sit, prepare yourself and probably have a much better pitch or a presentation or a meeting because you're so much better prepared. In 3D animation and design, uh, you know, things like concept artists, game artists are already there. But even look at visual effects artists, motion graphic designer, Another example of how graphic design and motion design has changed in the industry. Um, a couple of years back, more and more, um, when movies are released, you have more and more motion posters being released, right? You have one or two elements that are moving, which is technically a still uh, image, which is something like fire, water, things that are movable that give you the in, that give you the feel of movement, but actually it's a still image. It's one. It's one element of that. Uh, uh, of that of that image that has been illustrated or tweaked or coded to move that way uh, so even motion design graphic design poster design has changed uh, fashion design and marketing uh, besides just being a designer and working for a fashion brand or a fashion house you can look at the entrepreneurial uh, business aspects as well like brand manager fashion buyer not everybody who works in the fashion industry is an ace designer right you probably have heard for people in the fashion field, you probably keep track of even um, stylists, right? Brand managers, fashion buyers. What do all these people do? It doesn't mean that they can take a uh, pencil to paper and actually create a fabulously new original design. They're looking at how the industry moves. Uh, UX and web design, again, something you all are probably already familiar with. But aside from UX and web designer, you can be an online producer, interactive media, uh, interactive media designer, Graphic designer, of course, as I said, moving posters for movies is one of the things that has changed in the last couple of years. Uh, this list is of our more hardcore tech, tech programs, but if you look, we also have uh, at the undergraduate level, which, tra which translates to where people are pursuing the postgraduate, game design and development. Aside from coding, remember, even in games, there's an aesthetic value that has to be pursued. So if you're into 3D, 2D animation, motion design, you can move into, or even if it's even if you're not doing motion design, things like being a character artist, things like being a texture artist. How do you create that 3D feel um, when somebody's playing a game? Whether it's something as simple as simple as Candy Crush, or um, there's this latest game uh, called Black Myth Wukong. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with it, 
the boys i would assume are more familiar with it which is um, you know it's been it's currently winning a lot of awards and is all the rave because of the amazing 3d rendition and how fast it moves coding plays a big part of how interactive and user friendly it is but you obviously cannot deny the uh, the amount of effort that has gone into the artistry of it and actually rendering those images and landscapes as well so we asked i talked earlier about our students winning awards uh, we won our students have won awards in in, in interior design fashion communication and photography uh, we we also have domestic students who do enroll in our diploma programs in art and in art and film and photography which are uh, which are not bachelor degrees but they overlap and they work in interdisciplinary fashion with our other students as well on projects so um again this is a bigger snapshot really of the kind of companies that are working with us uh, for us one of the reasons we pair when we talk about our programs we put technology and design together is again reiterating that all of our design programs do rely uh, do i wouldn't say rely they encourage our students to work very closely with technology because that is the movement you are headed in um so the programs that i'm talking about we have a whole bunch of programs in undergraduate this is obviously not something you are interested because you've already chosen a particular field which you are uh, which you're focusing on right now we do have a master of design this is an interdisciplinary program so it doesn't matter what design background you come from it's a two year full time degree program i showed you the kind of um, industry uh, the kind of companies we are already working with our program does have a work integrated learning which means you would be working on a live project with a company how that is structured is obviously depending on what the company is looking for and what you are looking for as well but if um you are interested in pursuing a post a post graduate program and it doesn't have to be immediately after graduation many people actually choose to work for a bit after completing their bachelor's degree so that they get industry experience and that also helps you figure out uh, you know when you do choose to do a post graduate program or a masters program you know yourself better you know your portfolio much better and you know where to invest your time and money in higher education so this is the structure and what it looks like uh, basically it's a two year program uh, in uh, we have a trimester system which is three study periods a uh, three study periods in a year and that's basically what that cycle looks like okay so a little bit of um, just to show you a little bit of what our vibe is on in torrens on our in australia okay i'm not sure how much of that you heard but it's a very fun video um this again just wanted to highlight because one of the key things that students do look for when they go abroad to study and regardless of whether you're coming to us or anybody else you should be looking at what are the industry opportunities you're investing in and that is a way to look at it because you're not just going for an academic program you are obviously going to broaden your horizons to look at what other networking opportunities you could get within an industry and when you are if you are planning to pursue your post graduate you that is something that you should be looking at and what who is your college or university actually connected with uh if you want more information specifically about the kind of programs that we have our website is a fantastic place to look at our full curriculums are up on the website so if you go master of design on our website look at it will give you an overview of what the program is like again list out who which companies we are working with the full curriculums of what subjects you are actually going to be studying how that works like i said before if i am not offering a specific a masters in a specific discipline how does that work you can actually go to the you can actually go to the website and actually look at um, 
what the subjects look like, what does it mean when you're working on a project. It usually means, I meant, I use this word interdisciplinary before. I think you're probably already getting familiar with those words, but that's what it essentially means, that you would work on where you would exercise your specialization or your field would be within assignments, projects, presentation, and your work integrated learning. We do have scholarships usually available as well. They're normally announced the year before. So when people do choose to apply, they usually inquire about our scholarships and we give them a heads up on that. I'm going to quickly cover the second specialization school that we have, which is located in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, this is Media Design School. Again, we just completed 25 years this year. Fantastically long, uh, uh, fantastically well-built reputation within the industry. Uh, this is a study New Zealand video. Okay, so uh, why Auckland and why this particular college? Um, well, in, uh, in New Zealand, actually, uh, again, the tech space is really big. While fields like fashion and interior might not, would not be as successful as it would be in a Sydney or a Melbourne, uh, here, actually, MDS or Media Design School actually focuses on things like game art, 2D, 3D, motion design, graphic design. Uh, we also have a bunch of tech programs like AI and IT. But uh, it's a fantastically livable city, a lot of diversity and inclusive, inclusivity both in both uh, locations. Young population, young demographic. Uh, just a snapshot of the undergraduate programs that we have. So I've just highlighted the design programs. Like I said, we have a bunch of tech programs as well. But here again, you can see where we are emphasizing primarily media design, virtual digital design. Uh, so 3D animation, game art, and then a Bachelor of Media Design, we have three different uh, specializations. So here are the postgraduate programs that we have with MDS and uh, New Zealand. So New Zealand has a different academic structure. Here, instead of jumping straight into a master's, it's actually split into two different one-year programs. There's a postgraduate diploma, uh, which is of one year. And then there's another one-year program in uh, master's. Now, this particular program, usually when people apply directly for a master's program, very rarely do they get in unless they come with fantastic work experience because it's, it's, it's a very research-based program. It's almost you do put up a research proposal and you do it. So if you actually go to our website and you look at the curriculum for masters, there's nothing listed academically. Uh, it's actually a, a research-based program, which is why people need to come in with more uh, experience. Or there are people who do our PGD first understand what our structure and setup is like, and then may choose to do the masters later. But most of them usually choose to get into the industry in New Zealand itself to get, like I said, more hands-on experience. The more you work, the more you know yourself, the better you know the industry, and the more you hone your skills and understand where you need to improve or what you want to specialize in. So this is our student showreel for 2022. So everything that you saw there was done by a student, essentially. Um, again, this is a snapshot of the companies that are working very, these are our exclusive industry partners. 
um, IBM, PlayStation, uh, you would have definitely heard of. I think Unity also, if you all have played mobile games. Uh, so these uh, Houdini uh, software company. So these are the kind of people that are closely uh, working with us. Uh, you guys have, has, has, I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, Weta Workshop. So do you know the Lord of the Rings movies, the original trilogy? Uh, Weta was the um, VFX company that grew from there uh, based in New Zealand. And um, Weta, after that, they've been obviously super successful and they've done work with a lot of different, uh, on a lot of different movies. Weta, almost 80% of our graduates end up going through Weta. Again, that's basically, I, when I talked about 3D, motion, graphic, rendering, these things, uh, people don't talk about, uh, you know, jobs like color grader, texture designer. When you're working on a landscape within a game of or VFX, if you're trying to make something look realistic, how do you do that? That's hours and hours and hours of work, right? Uh, but that's, those are, there are basically a lot of different roles in the industry which nobody talks about where people do find their niche and find their expertise. Uh, with MDS for the design programs, we do require a portfolio. Uh, this is usually 15 to 20 pieces uh, of your best works. And we do not need, um, supposing your field or your, f your main uh, discipline is graphic design. I do not need to see everything only in graphic design. You can mix in pencil paper, you can mix in motion design. Um, the idea is to showcase what your range is. And even if you showcase progress, sometimes people will include really early works, three, two to three early works, because that shows you what your progress has been like and where you are now. Um, that's the end of my presentation. I don't want to bore you guys, but uh, love what you do is the Torrance motto, where our goal is to ideally hope that students who are coming to us actually, um, actually, if you don't already know where you're going, you find your passion and uh, you work towards it in a way that doesn't feel like a burden, that ultimately when you do end up with a job, when you're in the industry, um, you find a way to, you know, navigate your path so that you're, you actually like to go to work. At the end of the day, after academics is done, adult living is really living the same day over and over again. But it's not the same if you actually like going into the place that you're working. Um, that's the end of my presentation. I'm just going to give you a few extra pointers about if you are actually considering going abroad to study. Um, aside from what I've shown you, in general, if you're uh, reviewing your opportunities, one is consider um, the destination you're going to. Different countries have different pros and cons, which means you will have to figure out what your priority is. Now, what I mean by that is things like budget, things like stay back, things like part-time work, um, things like industry connections. These are things regardless of which university or college you're looking at. You should be reviewing that if you're going abroad to study. I always try to tell people that at the end of the day, it's time money, effort that you're investing in trying to better your future. So do the best research that you can. Um, rankings, accreditations. So rankings, um, while we have a couple of great rankings for some of our programs, the fact is that um, rankings don't tell you everything. What you do need to also consider are the practical balances of how much the course is, where you'll be studying. Do you need to come back immediately? Um, look at those things as well. Plan ahead. Uh, different countries have different visa requirements and sometimes planning for the visa will actually take more time than planning the, your application and acceptance. So just a few pointers to keep in mind if you are planning to move ahead. Even if you don't plan, even if you don't, um, if you choose not to pursue higher education after your bachelor's, um, as you navigate the industry, I, in a lot of ways, you'll have a lot of opportunity in front of you more and more industries are overlapping with each other. Um, you all would have heard how many, so raise your hand if you've heard any of these terms. Um, interdisciplinary, yeah, future thinking, right? Um, uh, leadership, um, leadership mindset, um, what else, what have I missed? Um, there are a whole bunch of them. Um, these are terms that are being used more and more for any field, anywhere, and, they're get, and people are hearing them 
earlier and earlier in their life. These are terms that are very new. Similar terms that I would have heard is after I would have actually entered the industry and you would have worked, I, it, and my generation worked for a couple of years when people are looking to be promoted and things like that. Now these terms are talked about, like I said, you guys have already heard this. What is the meaning of all of this? More and more industries are overlapping. The reason you're taught in interdisciplinary fashions, for example, is because you do have to know a little bit about the other person and their job to do your job better if you are working for the same goal, right? Um, leadership mindset, people think it's about winning and it's about promotions or ambition. Leadership mindset is about um, taking people along with you and growing everybody together, right? So these are things that you will hear more and more. Uh, future thinking, future thinking is not about predicting the future. Future thinking is looking at where you are right now um, and based on trends and history, looking at what are the possibilities are for the future and actually anticipating that and growing towards different possibilities and not having a rigid mindset. So uh, these, are, these are just some of the few things I want to talk about aside from this. I think you all are in a great position to make a lot of different choices with the world ahead of you all. Um, I'm here right now if anyone has um, a question. I have a bunch of flyers that I'll share around. Uh, there are inquiry forms if you want to fill in and ask more questions or you all can just reach out once you're on the website. But I would definitely encourage you all to uh, look at our YouTube uh, pages as well, our YouTube uh, channels, if not for anything, for some fantastic inspiration in interior, um, fashion, graphic communication, design, game art. And um, you know, have a look at, um, have a look at what's happening and take inspiration from there, if nothing else. Thank you guys so much for your time. I'm here if you have any questions. Right now also, if you want to raise your hand, ask any questions that you have, uh, please feel free. Thank you for your time, guys.